We're going to call the meeting to order at about 5.35. Um, welcome, everybody. I hope you all welcome. have a very good and healthy and productive summer. Um, the first order of business uh, is to review and approve the minutes of June 11th, uh, our last meeting. So, does anybody have any comments, edits? Additions? No? Okay. So, I okay, a motion to approve the minutes. Motion uh, to approve the minutes. Um, okay. June 11th. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Okay. So moved. And moving on to financial statements. Um, yeah. Uh, so thank you for signing those. I'm happy to get those bills paid. Um, I did send out late electronically the report that I just put in front of you. I will do um, my best to get them out earlier next time. And if there is something that you want to see done different, I'm happy to take feedback um, as we go into the school year. So okay. please just let me know if there's something missing that you want to see or something that you'd like to change. I'm happy to take it into consideration. Great. Um, so we've closed out uh, the end of year for fiscal 19 with the town uh, encumbrances carrying over are just shy of 90,000 and our school choice rollover as stated is um, $1,027,000 of which 66,000 is left on fiscal year 19 and then we had prior year funds remaining of over 900,000. Uh, and then the last piece of FY19 to close out is to file the end of year uh, DESE report, which is due by October 1st. So I'll be working on that in the coming weeks. Okay. Moving into 20, there's not a lot to report on the expenditure side of things so far. Uh, I did give you the expenditure report. Happy to take questions or um, comments on that. Uh, looking at school choice numbers for 20, um, we're just over 450,000. Uh, and I am currently going through the FY20 budget document to make sure that everything is in alignment and up to par uh, as there are changes in staffing or mm -hmm. just taking a look at formulas and making sure that everything is where it needs to be. Great. Okay. Great. Okay. Any questions? Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Moving right along here. Any public comment this evening? No? Okay. Am I wrong? Uh, so, discussion items. Uh, the joint uh, MASC annual conference. Who's handling that? Do we need an official delegate uh, we do. from the committee? We yeah. Might. I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it this year. Okay. Anyone going? Do you care? Do you definitely go. Do you head out to the conference at all? Have you been yet? I have been. Yeah. I'm not sure interested in that. But. No. Well, we could just uh, table, it. table it, sure, or appoint one and an alternate, and then just let it fall into place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you have no one yet, it's not a big deal. Just 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 okay. From what I've seen, the votes yeah. are not exactly yeah. changing okay. the direction of education. <laughs> yes. <No. Yeah. laughs> yeah, maybe this is the year. <laughs> um, you know, Frontier will be sitting. I know there's several other people from the other communities going. So I do enjoy yeah. it. The general yeah. interests of our area will get. It's an excellent yeah. <coughs> okay. okay, Safe Schools Grant. Did you want to, you want to move, Lori? Is that a, uh, that a, like two down from there? Sure, sorry. Let's move to a discussion of uh, charging stations for electric automobiles. <laughs> charging station there was some interest from the select board about 
but he went in town. And then I just put together a quick Google um, survey to see if there's interest at the school. I don't, I didn't differentiate between whether the people who said that they drive EVs were at Frontier or Deerfield. But the reason that we thought we would look at David Elementary is because it would be uh, more uh, logistically manageable because the town owns the lot. Mm -hmm. so, um, so you can see here that uh, we get a, a cost for a typical charging station. If, uh, if we were to get the grant, it would fund 60% of that. And then there's these other added fees. Um, most of the other things can be done in-house here on town property with the DPW, but there would be a electrical installation hookup charge. Uh, the other thing that's available now is Eversource um, will bring the lines to the charger, but then we need an electrician to do the final hookup. So that's, uh, we call it the Make Ready Grant. So that is a program that's happening now. And then uh, they require, which is kind of new from the, the, a lot of the current charging stations, they require a system that the users can pay somehow. Um, so there would be an annual cost also. Down where it says projected <coughs> usage, I just came up with some numbers. It's a great algebra problem here of what, I, you know, what we could estimate it would be used at, um, what a possible charge might be per hour. Um, I noted that Greenfield has got some new charging stations at their new parking garage. I'm not sure how they landed on $1.25 an hour, but I have gotten some feedback that the current cost of gas, it, it barely, you know, it's not really a, um, a great deal to plug in um, versus, and, and it's also reflective of what it would cost for you to plug in at home and how far you have to drive, and if your car is EV only, my, I have a bolt that also goes on gas, so I'm not going to be super desperate for a charge. Um, so it was great to talk with Dave Purrington at Deerfield Academy. They've had some charging stations there for a couple of years, and they're getting a few more. So is it, um, you know, an immediate necessity? No. Is it a, a nice idea for the future direction we want to be thinking? And um, the idea that the fewer fumes in a you know, school parking lots are better. Um, anyway, on the back, um, it ever source came out and went with the DPW to look at where the best station, the best location would be in regards to where the current power is. So hopefully this makes some sense to you. It's across from the current handicapped space and it would take advantage of the extra wide lane there because one of the station, one of the, um, <laughs> That's your parking spark. <laughs> so it, it comes with a, a Tesla. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I was just saying that one of the spots has to be accessible to a handicapped um, vehicle. Right. So those two spaces would have to be EV only if we put in a if you were to put in a how much over there. And then what's the one behind it? You said maybe reserve that spot for something? Or is it RSC, RES? You know what? These are, I don't know who's handwriting this. Oh, <laughs> Kevin's okay. Yeah, maybe. Uh, um, so it would be the for two spots. One, one wouldn't be handicap accessible and one would be. Oh, but I see. it doesn't have to be, it's not a handicap only space. It's an EV only space that could also be used by a van. Right. Okay. So Eversource would would run the line from the, this pole, or put a new pole in, it looks like here, run the line along the property, along the trees. Yeah, and, then, and there is a, I just went out there, um, right now, and there is a light pole there, so I'm guessing that's probably why they chose that spot. Gotcha, um, yeah. Okay. So, <coughs> can I ask a couple questions? I'm sorry. Um, are, are you, um, Telling us this because you um, are wanting us to, if, let's say we're all in favor, wanting to make a decision to go for it in our parking lot. And if so, is there money that you're asking the school committee to so, expend um, on that? So I'm providing information yeah. before the town could 
apply for a grant, um, they have to get some feedback from the school committee, is what mm -hmm. I understand from well, yes. from the school board here. <laughs> but that's what Diana said. Mm -hmm. um, and then as far as, um, so obviously every grant comes with its you know, cost. As far as where the, the 3140 would come from, um, I know that there are potential private foundations that might get up. I, mean, I, don't, I don't know right off the top of my head where that money would come from. But, um, that, but as far as the Eversource part, they've made it clear that there's no obligation to follow through on the grant if we do the preliminary you know, application. As far as the, um, the grant for funding 60% of the charter, I think they, they want you to <laughs> yeah. want it before you apply for it. So, so I'm giving information as, as an energy committee member of something that um, is the money that's available now that mm -hmm. might want to be considered by the school committee. Mm -hmm. and the town, it says that the town submitted a preliminary application for the Leary lot. Yes. Um, and are, are you... Your information seemed to suggest that our lot would be a better place or an no, additional, no, place? additional place? An additional place. Okay, yes. sorry. I think, so yeah. if I gather this right, we were looking at places in town of, that we would look at doing EV and uh, spots and you know, the, the Leary lot would be one because there's, there's electricity right there, it's downtown, it's central, people could use it, it makes sense. Um, then the other thoughts were is there an appetite for that, um, you know, one, at, one or two at the school, one or two at Frontier, and so we thought, you know, it's, you would have to have buy-in from the school committee, are they interested in that, is it something that there's a demand for, and I know you've done some survey work to see if there was, and there's, there's some, you know, pro policy we'd have to come up with, and like, who, who has access to this, how it, how it works. Um, I mean, it's kind of the future is wh where we're going, is eventually there'll be more and more of these using them. Um, so we're just trying to think, like if we're going to pave a parking lot at some point, something to think about, is it something we want to do now or pave the parking lot and then cut it up for this later on? Just kind of forward thinking, you know, where, where we're going with that stuff. So. And the other piece about the school is that, um, you know, real transient parking, like right in front of Cheslitz or something, it wouldn't, wouldn't make sense to charge there. You want to be someplace for at least an hour, probably, before you plug it. So the school, right. people are here for so that's another reason why I, you know, we looked at the space. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Lori. Thank you. Anybody have any further questions? No? All right. Great. Thank you, Lori. Thanks. Thanks. Ken, you want to take over? Sure. All right. We, um, we moved down in the uh, discussion. I, I so assume good. that you moved down. So back up to Safe Schools Grant, probably. Safe schools grant. We didn't take care of anybody on the delegate? No, we didn't do that. We the table that was you want to be the delegate. No. Okay. okay. Uh, so the safe schools grant? Yes. <coughs> so um, we were awarded, I think I sent you guys all an email and we were awarded, but I haven't said it publicly other than the press release. But we were awarded all of our schools received a safe schools grant. Um, and I really want to thank um, Scott Paul and the principals for putting that together um, way back in March. But basically, um, how it's going to affect Deerfield is Deerfield was awarded $31,000. Um, it's a non-matching grant, so meaning that that money's straight up for us to use. We don't use any other school funds right. to match with it um, to improve the safe, different safety um, things about our building. So we're going to be putting that money to improving camera and access ways into the building. We had already been in progress changing to the key fob system. Yeah. The grant did not allow us to go back and pay for that. What we did at the end of the last spring, so we're going to be a little. We've kind of adjusted it and moving it forward to pay for improving. We kind of we're doing a very basic. Now we can kind of do a little bit more. Right. So you know, things to know. Um, for example, we can we'll know when doors are propped. You know, if there's an access during the school day. Um, it's not supposed to be there. So. Um, so improving upon the key fob system. And the key fob system is up and running and hopefully running smoothly on the hand teams looking down, but um, up and running well. smoothly. So we have we have switched over from the key entry to the key fob system. That's gonna really help us, really allow us to be a public building. Yeah. Um, 
with more safety in a sense so that we can keep people out on the, during the school day. Yeah. We'll also have access on the weekends and be able to apply keys to both. So, because they're, they're past access codes and stuff. You got on Saturday, you can get on Monday morning. So, not anymore. Right. Right. So, right. creating different things there. So, right. so, it's wonderful we got that. And um, it's also, um, you can see the, it's in my principal's report, the exact, I mean, my superintendent's report, <laughs> the exact numbers. Hold on, the good old days. Um, good old days. Where each school received different amounts based on yep. what their needs were. So, um, that's that's good. Good. So that is your seat, schools and communities grant. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Deerfield capital appropriation of twenty-seven thousand dollars. Generator funds. <coughs> yes. So I was contacted by. Were you? Was that kind of? Were you contacted? Someone. Someone contacted us. Both of us contacted regarding um, from the town that back in two thousand thirteen um, we had started moving forward to put a generator in the school, and for my understanding I had to go back to the warrants of 2013 to figure this out because no one's in position that was here in 2013. Um, you know, taking from free cash $27,000 to, um, you know, to put a, is a grant with matching funds? We don't really know where all this went. You know, I don't know if it, whatever, but the money is sitting there. And so what really, so I asked, they said, what do you want to do with it? Do you want to put it back to town? I said, really, I want to bring it back to the committee. This is where it started. Um, to talk about whether or not we should be putting a generator in the school um, or not. And so if we don't want to use it, the money is only appropriate for that and was, you know, what did I tell you for that? Um, so we will be giving it back. You can't say, hey, can we use it for books or, you know, vacations. I don't know if you remember, Ken, what that was about. I don't recall. The well, we talked about, we've talked over the years about a generator for this building. Um, the town's always, you know, they wanted to put a generator in down at the treatment plant and, yes, you, we know, do. <laughs> and you know, there, there are multiple priorities. Frontier has a generator, it's not the full school, but yeah. it's a good emergency system there. Um, and the thought had been in the past that we would have a generator put onto this building so that it could serve as an emergency shelter. Um, that has not received much traction with the uh, select board in the past, but we put $27,000 aside from my recollection in 2014 to begin the process of um, bringing this, this building up so that it could accept a generator mm -hmm. and with the eye towards it being part of um, overall an overall generator budget right um, and I don't know we've made improvements on the electrical system I think some in this <coughs> building but I don't know exactly what's been done since then right um, so I, you know when Darius sent this to me that was my recollection okay and I you know, unless we want to submit a request for a generator in the coming school year <coughs> again mm -hmm. and see what the town fathers want to do with it and, you know, the DDIC wants to do with it. I mean, um, capital plan wants right. to do with it. Right. I, I don't see any need to keep $27,000 on the books. I think we should just... Yeah, I know that there's... They just prepped the spot for the, the one at the town hall, which I think is going to go in pretty soon. Mm -hmm. um, that they've been, we've been sitting on capital over there for a couple of years too, kind of waiting to get that done. Um, so I know that that's going to go in. That will power the police station, and town hall. Um, so I don't, I don't really try to afford not to. I was talking to Darius, and if, if we did have an emergency, I wasn't sure if Frontier could be the. Um, I mean, people would go to Frontier for, you know, it's a bigger building, you've got more accessibility for, um, for emergency. Um, but again, Frontier is not a Deerfield property, so I wasn't sure if, we, right. if Deerfield had to have its own kind of area, and this was mm -hmm. worthy to do. Um, I mean, I could check in with the town and see what the thoughts were if we want to, if it would be redundant, or if it's something that is still, um, something that people want to move forward with and would want to fund right. in the next couple of years. I mean, beyond an emergency shelter, there's always, you know, there's always a concern um, that there could be a protracted power outage in town and then it's in the middle of winter. 
Right. How do you keep building systems and how do you keep the building warm so that we don't risk freeze ups and right. all the wonderful things that can happen if, mm -hmm. if you're out for a protracted length of time? But that's, right. I mean, in my in my years in Deerfield, yeah, I, I mean, my street has lost power for almost 10 days, but uh, not the center of town. So right. I just, I don't know. I, I, I would like to see personally that we at least have something to run the systems in this building. Right. In the event of a protracted power outage. Was the, <laughs> was the 27,000 enough to cover the cost of no, the no. That that would be enough to cover the <clears throat> the electrical system that was initially put in in this building provided for a generator link, but all it provided for essentially was the ability to run the boilers and some very minimal systems in the building. Um, the, so the twenty seven thousand was intended to start the work towards doing all the work in the circuit. You know the circuit boards and circuit breakers and circuits in the in the building, so that we could switch over to generator power if we if we had to, if if there, if a need arose. Mm -hmm. um, and then you would need to prep the. And then you know. I, I mean, a generator to run a building of this size, I I don't know what it would cost. Mm -hmm. uh, it probably. I'm, if I was guessing, somewhere between seventy and one hundred twenty-five thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Seventy-five. So, so are we saying that basically that was a down payment that year to start this process mm -hmm. of investigating, mm -hmm. and then I believe it was the prep the building, yeah. prep the building, and prep then the come building. back and see if we. So, would we want to? So, is it? Sorry, mm -hmm. prep the building, right? I mean, it sounds like it's maybe something that fell through the cracks. Well, obviously fell through the cracks, but, but um, you know, and maybe now. Something we pick up again if we have new systems in place. So I mean, the, the, <clears throat> I would kind of go back to what Trevor was saying earlier: was what is the emergency plan for the town? Mm -hmm. I mean, you do have Frontier, which is an emergency evacuation site across the street. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean, with the full generator and that kind of stuff, and mm -hmm. able to run kitchens and whatnot. I mean, to duplicate it across the street. I mean, and when I was principal, I used to get the annual call that says, "Are you ready to be an evacuation center within 24 hours?" And so they're definitely part of the county-wide right. system. So we don't have to make any action on this tonight. Right. Um, they have taken the money and they, have, they were going to wipe it. And they, and they said, no, we'll hold it until, you know, for this year as you guys kind of go through and decide what yeah. to do with it. And maybe we see how we fit into the greater, the greater plans of the town, mm -hmm. you know. So that's my, right. I mean, maybe we don't have information to move forward right now, but that was. Well, at the very least we could. Hopefully, I mean, you could potentially use this to find out what needs to be done mm -hmm. to set the building up. Right. And I mean, if if you s at least if we at least set it up, then you, you can, can always go. rent a portable generator or something like that in the, right. in an, in a true emergency that you could bring in and link into the building. Right. But right now, we don't have the capability of even doing that. Yeah, I didn't even right. realize that. Right. But I thought you said it's set up to hook a generator in to do a couple of basic things like our, the heat. Right. right, but our boilers have been changed since right. then. So, okay. <laughs> yep. So yeah, some of the building like, systems that, that are in that mechanical room. Right, but you set up a building like this for a generator, you put certain lines on a generator system so that you have refrigeration moving forward, you have right. heating source moving forward, right. and you usually have a right. central area that still has electricity. The same thing is set for Frontier. The whole building doesn't light up, just mm -hmm. key areas, yeah. mm -hmm. just key areas do. So, so yeah. yeah. I mean, so, yeah. Right. We should check in on what you're talking right. Yeah, I mean, because yeah, the town right. hall is being done, but it, it wouldn't be as true an emergency it, it's similar as this would be, this. and yeah. this has you can, you can set up the kitchen, and you've got dining and Layers capabilities and that yeah. don't exist in the town hall. Absolutely. Um, if we if we reach that stage where it was truly needed, so. Um, All right. All right. So marching orders right now is I will talk to Bill. Yeah. Yeah. He's going to find out where we're at electric wise in this building, in the sense of. Yep. Moving forward for prep, and then meanwhile we're also going to have conversations about what is the emergency plan for the town. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, can do that. Um, and I can have you know and we can have side conversations with, sure. with the chiefs of fire yep. and police and Definitely. figure out what they think is necessary because they're they're planning these kind of things all the time at those at those systems. Absolutely. So. Yep.
Okay. And we'll bring it back. That sounds mm -hmm. good. All right. Thank you. One more thing for the list. <laughs> yep. Back on the list. <clears throat> so. Okay, thank you. Um, discussion of the Oh, I'm sorry. Discussion of the settlement agreement between the Deerfield School Committees and the Union 38 Instructional Assistance Association for the 2019 through 2022 contract years. So we have a copy of the settlement um, mm -hmm. that can be reviewed in executive session because it isn't a signed copy yet. So it's technically we're still in negotiations. Um, so I recommend we go to we put the we. Shuffle that to the end. Okay. We'll go to executive session, but you will have to vote on that. So we'll have to come back to the executive vote. session to vote that. Yep. Um, the other executive session that's on the, on the, uh, what we call it, agenda, there we go, is to approve minutes from previous executive sessions. Right. So this one's just kind of some, some busy work there. Mm -hmm. Okay. We've already discussed the charging stations, policy KHC, dissemination of information. So you should have in your packets um, the first policy, which is basically what we're doing there is um, currently the, what's happening at, the, at all of our elementary schools, more so than the secondary, is that um, outside organizations are distributing flyers and stuff, nonprofit ones, um, about their different things. And it's cumbersome. We get quite a few, and Tina can jump in at any time. Um, we get quite a few you know, um, flyers for good things, you know, but you know, they're going, we're shoving in backpacks and you know, they're, they're getting home as part of the packets. And so um, I'd like to go to um, no longer allowing paper flyers, unless at the exception of the principal or the superintendent, everything be done as part of the principal's re report to families via email. And at the end of the, the second half of the emails, just kind of, it's been, we've already started doing this, but it's, the, it's a laundry list of different opportunities and things that are going on in the community. Um, there are plenty of exceptions where we can modify this. You know, for example, the PTO doesn't count. Um, you know, anything that the if anything that comes up that's more emergency or that kind of thing, the principal can make a judgment or I can make a judgment to move away from that. But the average, you know, join the Boy Scouts. You know, that should just go home and they instead there's random flyers being handed out at, at different times. Is there anything? That, no. Agreed. Agreed that, but agreed that it's at a point where it's too much. You're coming in with just stacks and they have to be divided up. It takes a lot of office time and it's really, exactly. you know. It's, it's a lot of office time. We get a lot of office time. <coughs> they want us to make the copies warm too, or we disseminate them. And teachers can tell you there's a lot that go home yeah. for the kids. So just putting it in our monthly newsletters and we send those out on yep. the Black Bear Bulletin and just having a section for those. Mm -hmm. I can foresee that there's going to be times where something comes in just after a newsletter goes out, and then we'll have to make a decision how mm -hmm. to send it out because I might miss a deadline or something. Yeah. It'll be it'll take a year to. Yeah. yeah. We'll be flexible within the first year as well too, but it'll take a year to train all the different groups right. that they really have to get it to us in the beginning, you know, in order to get out there in time. But you know, if there's other more important. I want to say more important, but you know, community events that miss the fire deadline. I mean, it's not a policy to punish, it's a policy just to kind of make things yeah. more efficient for everybody. Yeah, yeah. makes sense. <clears throat> so this is a reading, so we're just kind of going through it and we'll be voting at the next meeting. Okay. okay. And then we have policy IMGA, dissection and dissection alternatives. That's so exciting. as you know, we run, we run the policies through for all, all five schools to be the same. So this is really probably more geared to the secondary, although I've seen dissections in sixth grade when I came through last yeah. year there was something used to do being, being cut open um some was a heart of some sort yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so um anyway um but this is basically this is as you can see was uh way back in 2005 the elementary and secondary policy basically having alternatives involved there's no longer are you forced to cut open a frog um that we remember from all the movies or our own um our own uh, travels through school, um, there can be alternatives. And that's been in place already, at the, for those of you who are wondering what's going on now, that's already been in place in, in, at the high school um, for those classes that do a lot more dissection. But we just wanna make sure that policy in case, you know, it's usually when something comes up, is when you know, someone says, what's the alternative activity and what are you providing? And that kind of explains that in that policy. So again, just a reading, we'll vote on it next time. Okay. So 
under votes required, <coughs> we have uh, the delegate representative, which was table, and the delegate to vote, and uh, recommended proposal of capital appropriation funds, which would have been the, the generator. generator you want to take action on that, so you're tabling that. Right. I ain't getting a whole lot done tonight. It's called efficiency. Yeah. We're easing and, into the uh, next vote will go into executive session prior to that. And uh, that board is down. I can get my to reports. We can jump to reports. Committee and chairman, I have no report to give. <laughs> so. Uh, <clears throat> Collaborative. The collaborative. Meeting, I don't know. I don't, I don't think you've had a meeting. Yet, have you? Yep. Yeah. And the principal report. I feel like Darius was just given the entire report in here. I mean, what <laughs> um, so we shed a little limelight on our students as we all wore fluorescent green shirts for opening day. Thank you, teachers, for joining in on that. <laughs> that was Jen's favorite color, so that was good. It, right? Yeah. Um, you know, we're off to a, a great start. Bass, I'm not sure where summer went. I'm not sure how you guys feel about it, but I feel like our building was busy all summer long, so it kind of just shifted right into the school year. Um, so come visit us and see all the new faces we have. We have a lot of, I mean, what are we, four new instructional assistants. Um, their names are there. Um, we have some teachers. I can read them off. Anybody else to? Yeah. Yeah, you're good? Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, we have a new AP, Kathy Smith. We have a new special education secretary. And we have a new long term um, special education liaison. So there's a lot of new faces that come yeah. with it. Um, coming up this Friday, we have our district to kick off for um, professional development. And Kim has done loads of work. <laughs> preparing for a gala type event. Uh, everyone will meet at the high school and we're really working to promote academic rigor and student engagement through a social emotional lens with a trauma focus this year. Um, these topics were chosen by teachers through surveys. Uh, our building based P PLCs, teachers have uh, selected books and they'll dig a little deeper on each topic in the building base. So more information to come, we'll keep you posted on our work. Our instructional leadership team will meet this week to review the preliminary data that's out for MCAS and um, other data points just to listen for patterns and trends. Uh, we meet throughout the year to just kind of inform our instructional practices, but we begin that this week. Um, I have a facilities report. Bill, do you mind giving that? <laughs> no. <laughs> I invited Bill. Bill does a lot of work. He's really um, kind of meshed his way right in. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's kind of really fit in. He's hit the ground running. We've already we've done a lot of work with the custodians, but I thought it would be great for him to come in and share some of the um, mm -hmm. some of his accomplishments actually in the first short time you've been here. Yeah, so we um, Tina and I together have been meeting monthly with the custodians, and we've both been working on a draft of a handbook that she started. Um, we're trying to strengthen the team that we already have, yeah. the great team that we already have. Uh, this summer we were able to get the, the gym floor refurbished, came out beautiful. Good. What was that, a two and a half point line or something? Yeah, <laughs> <a two> <laughs> um, the office speech room floor was redone with vinyl plank, it came out real nice. We think we're going to try a couple classrooms here, uh, maybe February vacation. Yes. Um, we've got some money allotted for that. We're gonna we're gonna try the vinyl plank in those classrooms. It was a new material that we were trialing, and we put it in the office because it's a high traffic I area, saw that. and it's supposed to have some lower maintenance to yeah. it. So we we put it in there to see how it was gonna hold up, and we're thinking that we might go down into the classroom. Does it great? Yeah. Mm -hmm. No wax. Great. I don't know if that's a. I'm not a custodian, but yeah. I think the waxing is a. A lot, uh, a lot of work to keep mm -hmm. it. It's nice. They're easier to clean. They're just yeah. moppable, and then you can, if you have some damage, you can just replace the plank that's damaged. Right. Um, mm -hmm. The only negative part that could come is like in a room like this is, is acoustics, because uh, the carpet helps you with that. Yeah. The vinyl could make it louder, but but we were looking to move that away from a lot of the carpet anyways, because those things. Right. Have been they used. have tile in place. They have tile. Right. So that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Thank good. you. Yeah. More, more yeah. Area yeah. carpets now. Yes. Right. And we yep. got to replace those on the We had a uh, problem out here in the uh, loading area, in the, in the delivery area with the, with the concrete, and we got that all patched up. And I've got a, 
a contractor coming in to put a layer of Ardex down, which will buy us a lot of time and preserve that preserve that area for a long time without having to replace the whole yeah. the whole surface area out there. It kind of makes it a uniform color too, so it's going to visually appealing too. Great. Yeah. And um, the bathrooms mm -hmm. that were already planned prior to me coming here, those are all lined up for February vacation. Fantastic. New floor, new partitions. Great. And they're going to look great. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And um, we'll keep rolling. Can we read the last one? No, and we're, looking, we're also working to um, schedule the two classroom carpet replacements that we have in the budget yeah. for that same week. So we figured we'd have everybody come in during that time. Yep. And now you can read the last line. I am enjoying work, my work with Tina. <laughs> <laughs> You know, our, pl our plan is to just, as you as you go around, is to um, continue with the bathroom. So, right. Yep. We want to just and know what that capital, I'd really love to see. I'm so glad you're on board. I'd love to, you know, working with the Capital Improvement Planning Committee in town, we'd love by December 1st to have our um, our capital requests in. Mm -hmm. So if you, you know, in the next couple months, look around and see what needs to happen. We can get that into capital planning Absolutely. early, and we'll yep. we'll get that stuff right. on the board. So we, we talked about that that we want to have kind of very uh, very transparent what our next our three year capital Perfect. planning goals that'd be, are. That'd be great. You know, obviously, I want the committee and us to be able to control the priorities of moving on that because you may have something that's a level three priority and next year. Mm -hmm. It broke faster yes. than expected, and we will move it up. Right. But, yep. but but people can see that hey, we have a fifty thousand, we have a hundred thousand dollar thing, or maybe yes. you know the larger you know the ones yep. that we can't do inside our budget. Perfect. But and I have a decent sized file too on that generator topic. <clears throat> Whenever you guys want to get back to that, yes, mm -hmm. we yeah. can do okay. that. Yeah, we'll, sure. We'll, we'll reach out for sure. And Trevor, I know you've done a lot of work um, helping come up with the bathroom restorations, but we are going with plastic. It does not call plastic. What do we do for stalls? Yeah. It's plastic. It's yeah. Yeah. Plastic yeah. Great. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, that should be. Yeah, that'll right. hold up that'll a little bit. My yeah. specific request is to steer clear of this thing. Yes. Yeah. 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 That'll be great. Well, we're doing that just for you. I haven't seen, <laughs> I haven't seen many plastic. We've also, uh, we've also started a uh, playground safety. Um, yeah. Paying a lot more attention to that. Playground uh, safety chip maintenance. Good. And um, um, I'd just like to take this last minute here just to thank um, the the town um, DPW department, they've been a big help too. I had some um, safety issues out there and they provided me with some materials and, and awesome. helped us uh, really get the school it was looking great to open up, so. Yes, yeah, yeah, thank you. No, it's all looking really good. It's nice to see, you know, yeah. even coming through Frontier and seeing all the windows washed and all the stuff you're doing. <laughs> it's, it's, it really means a lot, you know, yeah. it really means a lot. With the, the parking parents. lot lines painted. Yeah, it looks great. So thank you for that, for that work. Thank you. Thanks. I'm glad you enjoy working with me. I enjoy working with you too. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so technology updates. We kind of talked about the fobs, and I just yep. want to thank the teachers because during that high time when the teachers want to get in here, you know, the week or two before school starts, that's when we decided to switch over from the um, keypads to the fobs, and so they were like, "We need to get in." Right. But they did a, a fabulous job of working around the schedules and coming in to get the fobs. But so far, in our eight days of using the fobs. No problems. That's so, awesome. Yeah, it's pretty good. That's really great. Um, so classroom news. Oh, you know, for technology, we also got um, a mobile screen. I was asking Darius and Trevor, what do we call this? I don't know what to interactive call it. Interactive panel. An interactive panel where now we can yep. have our presentations and it's on the move. I think Darius kind of prompted that because he, he was wanting something for one of the school committee meetings. I was like, oh, let me get the projector out. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, well, what are you doing? <laughs> like, I don't know. I didn't even know there was such a thing. It's so. like a big iPad. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 So we're excited about that. I can't say as if we've used it, but the librarian is really excited to have it in here. I'm sure she'll put a ticket uh, she's, she's used So basically, the yeah. and technology yeah. uses, they're getting to be close to the same price as smart boards. And so right. most of our classrooms have smart boards, and they're starting to get older and the bulbs are starting to go and the interactive is starting to go and so their tech was starting to experiment with different ones of these because they will last longer the bulb they're right. guaranteed longer as well so i don't know technology keeps changing and the yep. smart board was the coolest thing now this is the coolest thing but the mobility on that is great because yeah. you know, nice. usually you have to hook up to a smart board and go to the room so having just that flexibility is yeah it's will prove to be helpful because i can't say it's a good use it yeah yeah but we will 
Yes. So, and then we have a lot of um, first, uh, we have a lot of news that that's happening in the classrooms because, as you know, we do not give those kids any time to relax. You know, we've been working on routines and. The firsties are, you know, writing a book and getting to know themselves, and they'll be sharing that with their classmates and families. And second graders are doing the same thing, trying to get to know each other, but doing that through acrostic poems. Um, cute second grade says, come check them out on curriculum night. Okay. That's coming up. Great. Um, sixth grade has been doing some inspirational math with you cute, and there's some photos at the end of it of students working on some of those. Great. And in Spanish, oh, Spanish, I always love when they write these for me because I gotta practice my Spanish. <laughs> so they're working on Hola Amigos. And the returning students are singing a song about loose teeth because apparently we have a lot of those happening. <laughs> and they're calling it Flojo, which means loose. Cool. I could be wrong on the Spanish. Um, good. But yeah, so that's it. I think we're off to a good start this year. And that's awesome. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, good to see you. Superintendents, all right. Very similar. We had a great opening on um, first day with we had a great opening first day with teachers, and then we also had a great opening first day with the students. So, you know, just to echo what Tina said, it was went very well. Um, you know, currently tonight we'll be looking at the next thing we do is negotiations. Um, we'll be looking at the IAs. We're still working with the teachers um, right now. We're currently in mediation. Um, we had a meeting last week, and we'll be meeting again in about a, it's about a month. I think just had to with the schedules work. Um, but hopefully we'll be able to close out that soon as well. Um, I left in June with the superintendent evaluation, so that's going to go with the chairs. Um, I have a meeting set for the 24th right now, um, and be able to bring that to the full joint meeting, which we kind of talked about doing an evaluation, kind of bouncing around the different, mm -hmm. um, instead of all together at once. So I'll, I'll try to, we'll try, I want to try to figure a way to do it streamlined so we don't spend the whole meeting on evaluation when we have a lot of other business that yeah. Yeah. Um, the Safe School Community is great, we talked about earlier, but you can see what other schools were awarded in our district. Um, okay. I was reminded by a school committee member who attended, who attended um, the uh, MASC training, um, and you know, Carrie was there as well. And they really recommend, um, not just recommend, they, you need to be able to archive emails. And so I'll be um, sending everyone email addresses and um, whether or not you want to get on board with that, we can have a discussion, whatever, but I really have to kind of push that out there and have you reject not to do it. Because um, according to my legal counsel, they said you really should provide it to every mm -hmm. school committee member right. um, so that they're there. And then you can have it forwarded, and I can have IT do that for you. If you, let's say you have a Yahoo account, <coughs> so anytime I send an email to the school, the school account will forward it to your other account. You just have to make sure when you're replying, you go back to uh, if you do, you, you would type school business off of that. Again. Yeah. No, but the right. concern is that if you're doing private business, if you're doing school business on your private account and someone ever wants to see your records of they your have correspondence, correspondence that could get, you oh. know. Good luck. Yeah, just, I, I don't know. Too know. much. I know that some people are like, I don't know, that's all I use my school. <laughs> but I account for it, you're probably, then you're probably just fine, but yeah. I just have to kind of, my job is to yeah. no, pass it on to you guys in this country. Um, and then the other one is just the frontier. Um, as I said, I, on my superintendent's report, I had stuff that's going on in other buildings as well, but we did finally get the um, approval for the capital improvement bond, and so I'm in the process of right now working with Lock and Lord at the Bond Council to secure the funds. So it's, it's a long process, I'm learning. Mm -hmm. You don't just get the money after you vote yeah. it, you, and so um, it takes a while. So, But the, the next step there would be that capital improvement committee developing a timeline to use that money. For the there. But mm -hmm. great. Different school, but... Sounds good for Bayer. Great, right, thank you. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Um, any comments? We're about to go to the executive session. And the only business I really we enjoy working with Tina. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome to work with Tina. We know that. <laughs> You're supposed to read it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you for that. <laughs> so I will entertain motions to enter executive session pursuant to Mass General Laws Chapter 30A, Section 21A7 in order to comply with the open meeting law for the purpose of approving 
and releasing executive session minutes of November 8th, 2017 and for the approval of executive session minutes of May 14th, 2019 and June 11th, 2019. So moved. <clears throat> I think you probably put them together. Yeah, I was just going to, let me read them both. Okay, so sorry. Right. And also to enter executive session pursuant to Mass General Laws Chapter 30A, Section 21A3, to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining. And that's in regards to the Teachers and Instructional Association, uh, Instructional Assistant contracts that have been up for negotiation this year. So moved. Thank you. And second. Second. This is a roll call vote. Ken, yes. David? Uh, yes. Dr. Yep. Trevor McDaniel? Yep. Yes. Here. And Mary? Yes. And we will have Darius join us. Mm -hmm. 